Hello and welcome to Walker Tea Review. I'm Jason Walker here with a tea to explore. This is a Poir tea, it's a, which is you know in that larger category of uh, dark teas. Now the, you know the, the concept of dark teas is a newer, is one that's heard less often. Uh, it's not black tea. It's it's goes through a, a separate process. You can learn more about uh, dark teas on WalkerTeaReview.com. Did a dialogue on on dark teas and uh, how they're classified in relation to others. I'm going to set this down because I want to talk about the. It's pressed into a cake or a disc, uh, and in that process, I've able I've been able to kind of open this up, use my trusty pocket knife here, and just kind of worked into the edge here, and inserted, twisted, worked my way around like that until I was able to get a top and bottom half. And by doing so, some of the leaves loosened up. Those are going to steep a little more easily. So that's why I'm going to, some of those leaves that loosened and fell off during that process, I'm going to rake into here. I want enough to cover, say, the bottom inch to inch and a half diameter of my three ounce guy wand here. That looks pretty good. And uh, poor teas will often uh, come off pretty strong, pretty rich in, in color, uh, especially after the first few steeps. Say it'll look darker and richer than, say, a black tea. Okay. That's, and that's black tea as in uh, your, your Kimans, your your Yunnan, Dian Hongs, that's kind of, I'm using the English term of black tea, okay? So that's going to sit for a while, although I can't let it sit too long because it, it can oversteep quite easily. Introduce this tea for a minute, talked about this. This is from Jalam Teas, uh, jalamteas.com. You can get this, which is the Jingmai Autumn 2011 Shu, or Fermented Poir disc. Now they actually don't have any more of the full cakes left available as, uh, as of uh, last I checked. Uh, you can get a 10 gram sample for five dollars. Uh, background information talks about how this tea is produced by the Dai Maiority in the Jingmai Mountain area, Yunnan Province. 1500 to 1700 meters in elevation. Uh, so you've got some you've got ethnic minority groups like the Dai, I think the Hani were mentioned, a couple of others. You can find out more about uh, this tea and the people involved in, in producing it there on uh, jalamteas.com and their product page. Now, as I was saying, with a cake like this, depending on how tightly it's been pressed, you can open it up. And so you have different layers. So I'm going to talk about the dry leaf here and uh, hopefully get in then to the wet leaf and the liquor here later. Uh, you, have, you often have a, in a disc or pressed cake like this, you have a top there, surface area. And this is usually the more uh, cleaner looking, the more decorative. Uh, if, they are, if they're actually kind of arranging leaves uh, and layers of leaves, this will often be the prettier side. So I'm going to call this the heads side. The, the tails side will have a, a dip or impression in it, and uh, it, it serves several purposes. One of the purposes is, purposes is when you're wrapping the paper, it's like so, you've got a knot in the middle and you can twist and press it into that recession. Helps with the packaging purpose, um, but so you have, I should say, but I should say the back, the tail side here, may not be the prettiest side. So what you may hear people recommend is if you're going to break off pieces, break it off the back uh, so that you still preserve the, the aesthetic beauty of the, the front. If you want everyone to show it off, keep it for years, that kind of thing. If you open up in the middle, you can also see if there are differences in the layers of the back, front, and inside. Uh, Along the back, front, and inside, I'm seeing some golden reddish orange type uh, leaves, which indicates some, probably some younger leaves there. Uh, we'll see what else. On the inside, uh, these look like this. there's quite a bit along the outer areas here. 
that can be kind of teased out, loosened up, pulled off with the fingers. Uh, the ends, the very center here, the bullseye, um, which is maybe silver dollar size, quarter size, that's, uh, that's more densely packed, okay? That would take a little bit more. That would take a probably a tool of some sort to work those work that out. So it's got different levels of compactness. Okay, uh, aromas. Let me kind of give this a sniff. Let me slide this around. Give it a quick sniff here. It has the characteristic shu puar smells. Uh, it's going to be earthy. It's going to be the uh, kind of Think of fallen uh, trees that have been laying on the forest floor for a while. They've gotten, they may have gotten a little damp, gotten a little cool in the morning air. So there's that kind of earthy, old wood type of smell going on here. So that's what's present here. Although it's it's lighter, it's gentle, it's not as uh, intense as some that I've come across. Okay, now this is steeped quite a bit already, so I'm going to go ahead and pour. Let me kind of make a comment here on the, the. I did also, I should say, it's hard to tell leaf size and shape the way these have been pressed together. They're fairly compact. Uh, they're, I mean, they're fairly interwoven, so you, it's hard to really tease out and see one leaf from uh, tip to stem. Uh, and all the, the full shape of a leaf. So you kind of get the impression just kind of from the size of the of the uh, the cake, the uh, the general portions of leaves that can be seen. These are not some of necessarily the, some of the largest, biggest, most mature leaves that uh, that uh, you can get on some of these very large leaf puar trees. Okay, so it, I've, I've decanted. It's it's here. Let me get into the wet leaf. Give a shake. Still those uh, those earthy smells. Uh, again, damp forest wood. Something kind of uh, something kind of metallic. Um, if you've ever stu if you've ever had a penny or a a coin, uh, maybe even a nickel, in your mouth. You get that metallic kind of sense going on. There's some of that present here. Yeah, I feel like I feel like I've been I've got a mouthful of pennies that I've been soaking in my mouth for a while, and that that smell has traveled up into my nose. That's similar to what I'm getting here. Um, underneath that, alongside that, there's kind of the dried, uh, think about dried porcini mushroom. Uh, so it's kind of, a, kind of again, a, a dried uh, fungus type smell going on as well. Let me pull out, uh, I don't know that I'll get leaves, I'm not sure yet if I'll get leaves or leaf portions. I am noticing uh, here stuck to the lid, here, pieces here and there, uh, branches, twigs, inner stem with the leaves around were broken off. In this case, it looks to be a stem or twig there. I get portions of leaves like this. Uh, this one's unfurling fairly easily. I could, this is not a complete leaf. It's about oh, what is an inch or so in length and about the same at its maximum width. Uh, fairly, it feels like a fairly th relatively thick. It's not the thickest uh, leaf that I've encountered. Uh, it's ragged. It's, it's easily torn. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Here's another. This one's not, doesn't feel like it's going to open up quite as easily. Um, it's quite ragged. It's, it's got holes in it. It's got incomplete sides and edges to it. So that's a leaf, very ragged leaf portion there. Let me just lay that down if I can, get it off my, get it unstuck from my fingers. I'm going to set that down, put that to the side. I get to the liquor here, give it a swirl. Um, let's see, you know, nice, or it's got a very rich 
inky, dark color. It's beyond your your regular black tea type of color. This this uh, I because of the way that this was steeped, holding it up to the light, it's I, I, I can barely see some light coming through this. This is not transparent at all. Uh, looking down through is a little bit better. I can see some of the colors, but still, again, deeper, darker, uh, brown, purple, more so than I say a reddish, rust-type ochre, those kinds of colors. Uh, the other thing I'm noticing, I'm kind of looking along the, the water line here, see tiny little bubbles. It looks like a bit of um, viscosity. It looks like there's a bit of, uh, of uh, thickness, syrupiness, but we'll see. That's uh, some uh, aficionados will look for bubbles. They'll look for a, a sticky type of texture going on. Let me give this a pour. Earthy smells uh, coming back more so. Uh, again, sweet, and moving a little bit more towards a sweet uh, fall, wet fall leaves, that kind of the sugars breaking down in the, in the autumn leaves. There's that kind of smell picking up in, in, in this. So it's a bit sweeter again, but it's also this, it's got a sweet, sweeter dried mushroom-like smell as well. Uh, again, some nice bubble kind of forming along the edge rim of, or the edge of my where the, where the, the liquor meets the, the wall of the, the cup. Yeah, some viscosity, some slickness, some syrupiness kind of in the, in the texture. It's, it's more than just a powdery. It's got a, he a heft to it. Uh, yeah, it's not that uh, metallic type of element. It's not a, uh, it's not a watery mushroom. You soak mush those dried porcini mushrooms in water, and you get this kind of minerally. Uh, there's a mineral component, but it's it's rounded with that that thickness, that kind of mol molasses-like, if I could say it that way, syrupy aspect here. Um, again, the aromas, the textures, the, the tastes, uh, more of the, the earthy component, um, rounded, more rounded than some. It's not, uh, again, not minerally, excessively minerally. It's got some earthiness and it moves almost over towards a bit of a kind of cocoa powder type aspect. As far as puars, uh, shu puars uh, of this kind of age, uh, this one, this one can stand on its own. It's it's going to give some nice again some nice nice mouthfeel, um, aftertaste. I'm getting a little bit of resonating sweetness still lingering there, with a bit of a kind of almost like a, a salty. Almost like I had uh, sipped a, a light uh, brine. It's got a bit of a kind of a salty aspect. So it's 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 thick. It's sweet. It's almost a little salty in the aftertaste. It, it, levels, uh, nuances, different things going on here. So looking at this one as a whole, uh, some pleasant characteristics here. Some something that you might want to try out for yourself. Uh, I would give this one. I should probably give this one a ninety. It's got some, again, redeeming qualities to it. Uh, it's a young, fairly youngish uh, tea. It hasn't been out that long. Something that you might want to look into. Uh, again, the cakes as a whole seem to be sold out, but it might give you an indication of what this particular group of people uh, in this area are, are doing with tea. So come back to Walker Tea Review, learn about this tea, uh, subscribe to the newsletter, get the, get the tea video reviews mailed to you directly so you don't have to come to the website. I'll go ahead and say that. Uh, you can also subscribe. There's member content where I go into a lot more detail on things like the background of, of Hecha, uh, of Puar, uh, where I get uh, interviews, uh, research, 
find out more and you can learn more so that you can appreciate the teas that you're looking for.